respectable people and you start telling us your wild, unrealistic things. Do you think we have time to waste? How can you, for us, we thought we were going to meet some big guy, you know, with a certain amount of money on the account and, and, and that, and you're telling us serious things. Now, he's saying nursing school, university, what? We don't have time to waste here. Me, I'm leaving. Never even waste and start calling us like that. He moved out and some other people moved out. But Dr. Laro did not move out. I, 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 after I, I went home, I was like, am I really doing the right thing? This guy is, is bright, he's intelligent, and he's saying I'm having wild ideas. Might be they are wild ideas. We need to abandon this. But I went to Dr. Olara uh, with some other person, and I, I explained to him, because Dr. Lara was the director of Otpoto Regional Referral Hospital at that time. And I could not start a nurses and midwifery training school without an MOU with a training hospital. It was a major, major requirement. So I went to him, said, Dr. Lara, you know, want to start a nursing school, as I had told you. Uh, we cannot start it without uh, an MOU. Could you help me? And we process an MOU and sign, start my, I start a nursing school. I know Ugandans, you know Ugandans. Every person you talk to will ask you, how much do you have for me? What is my stake in there? We all know the country we are living in and probably the world we are living in. Dr. Lara did not say that. He did not. He told me actually, that this nursing school should have started a long time ago because we need more nurses in this region. Actually, in the training hospital that can, gi can give us nurses to help us in the hospital. I will help you to make sure we secure this MOU. Without going talking a lot, in a short time, he convened the board of governors of Fort Porto Regional Referral Hospital, uh, presented the MOU I had taken to him and it was signed and that was the basis of starting this nursing school. So thank you. <laughs> other people who started nursing schools in other areas, they asked that every student you take to the hospital, you pay them. My colleagues who are having nursing schools in other regions are suffering with that. Dr. Lara did not say that when you bring here students, you pay. He never asked for a single coin. I think your wife should be a very blessed person because you are a straight person. So such people, you know, when you are in a country where everyone seems to be corrupt, where you think there is no good person on earth, you seem to hate and curse everyone, there are a few good people that we always need to look up to, talk about them, and maybe you could inspire other people to say, yeah, you can. And if he had asked for money, I wouldn't appoint him as a chancellor now because they would know he might uh, sell the institution. They would doubt him. So uh, such good people are there, and uh, we have to, 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 to seek support from them. And when Reverend Canon Samuel Morang told me that he might love to retire because he had a lot on his plate, I just called, he said, I think, Dr. Lara. And I just called him. Doctor, I think I had not talked with him for a long time. But I called him, Dr. Lara, we want you to be the chancellor of Finns Medical University. He said, yes, I'm available. I will be a chancellor. <laughs> he didn't say, I will consult my wife. He didn't say, I will consult at work. Let me see my schedule. He said, I will be. Thank you for the appointment. And that is still shows how much passion he has for his profession, how much energy he has to change the world, and make a small contribution. And we want to get a group of such kinds of people, work with them to change the world around us for the better. So thank you for accepting the, the appointment. We don't have a, anything to give you. We didn't give Reverend Samuel any money as salary or allowances or anything. He actually put in his money 
to do his work, to do the work for this university. I am sure God is blessing him. And you know what? God has already paid him more than enough. I think we may owe him some more money. He has just been crowned as a canon, probably as a payment of what he did for Finns Medical University and others. So, Reverend, what you did, you have already been paid more than enough. So, uh, we thank God for us. But uh, we are also going to, to have a cow, you know, being located in Toro region. We are also going to get a cow or two and present them to your home, probably on Monday as a, a sign of appreciation. <laughs> on top of the blessings God has already given you. So uh, when we don't see a big thing coming here, we, we appreciate. And I will personally, just like I came to, your, to you to ask you to be the chancellor, we shall still come to thank you for having served as a chancellor. So thank you, the two of you. Um, we have also got support from the municipal leaders. Probably that's why we have the Omarasto Mubuat here. See these young people, we have a lot of leaders, but when you see Omarasta is here, it means this generation is getting serious on changing. You should need to stand up and, uh, yes, you know? So when we started and we said we needed a road, people can't access the hospital, these people and others stood up and said we are going to put a road for you, don't, don't say so much, and the road should be tarmacked soon. So we also thank the leaders who have been with us. I don't want to say many, th I've already said many things, but uh, I'm so proud of these uh, people here. Dr. Stella uh, has really been great. When you saw her saying, Victor, stand up, uh, it's just because she's my teacher and she's my mentor. She's still my teacher, by the way. When I was doing my master's, she was my teacher. When I was doing my PhD, she was my teacher. She's still my teacher. So she has all the right to even say, please, Victor, run and pick me something and come back. It's very OK. So whenever we are in council meetings, we're like, hey, Dr. Stella, Victor, what? So she's led a very strong team of the council members, and we're making a lot of breakthroughs in most of the things that we are doing. Our determination is to make Finns Medical University the first and the best health training institution in Africa, and we shall achieve that. As directors, we are committed to put back all the money that you are getting from students and other sources to make sure that this institution is the greatest and all of us are proud to be part of. So with those very many words, thank you for coming once again, and may God bless all of you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Director, before you leave, uh, Mr. Vice Chancellor, you have something you are presenting to the outgoing chancellor, please. Definitely. Please definitely. do that right away. Uh, one thing we want to tell you, Reverend Samuel, and whoever is part of Finns Medical University, is that we shall never forget you. And as a sign, we have a few, not uh, what, we have something we have to put in our Ronald, board. Ronald, and you it's, help it's, it's a law that this will never be removed until this institution ceases to exist. So we have this, Ronald, you can help us turn it around. Um, we are going to hang, we are going to hang this in our council room. We're actually going to build it and engrave it in there. And no one should ever remove it uh, for as long as this institution exists. So as the first <laughs> chancellor, you will always be remembered, even when I'm not there, and even uh, you are not there, the institution will always know that you are the first chancellor, and that is not uh, a simple thing. We, are, we shall always know that there was a man who uh, was here. So we are going to install it there, we are going to build it there. Your children, your great-grandchildren, and the children of your children will always come and say, "My." relative, my father, my grandfather, made a contribution to this institution. And uh, before you leave, uh, we also want you. Uh, on the table. Hey, the someone chair. has stolen my thing or what? No. Security, please uh, search the <laughs> people in the room. <laughs> Especially Irene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So uh, we have this small award, and uh, this is uh, this is this award is presented to Reverend Canon Samuel Morangi Akiki in recognition for his great contribution to Finns Medical University as our first chancellor. You will forever be remembered and honored by Finns Medical University. Thank you. So that is what is written to the award. Uh, we hope you also keep it at your home. And it is not just a small uh, uh, stone, but we really mean the words on that, on that small thing. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, the chairman board. Of the people we have been working with, we do appreciate. So ladies and gentlemen, we are going now to a very important um, function which is the reason why we are here today, which is the installation of the second chancellor of Finns Medical University. I would like to let you know who Dr. Olaro Charles is. The director has talked about him, but I would also like to give more information about him with permission of the chairperson of the University Council. Uh, Dr. Olaro Charles is a highly educated person in the field of health sciences. He holds a Master's of Business Administration from the Eastern and Southern African Management Institute. He holds a Master's of Science in Health Services Management from Uganda Matters University is a foundation fellow from the College of Surgeons of East Central and Southern Africa. He holds a Master's of Medicine uh, Surgery degree from Makerere University. He holds a Bachelor's of Medicine and Bachelor's of Surgery from Makerere University. He did A-level and O-level and PLOE. So he is an accomplished a researcher, academician, and a health worker. He is currently the director, um, director health services, curative services, at the Ministry of Health. Um, he worked as a hospital director at Fort Porto Regional Far Hospital. Uh, he worked as an accounting officer vote 163 at Arua Regional Far Hospital. I uh, worked as a senior consultant um, um, surgeon at Fort Porto Regional Far Hospital. He has worked as a medical superintendent for Fort Porto Regional Far Hospital. Um, he has worked as a medical superintendent at Arua Regional Far Hospital. He has worked as an accounting officer vote 163 at Arua Regional Far Hospital. Consultant surgery Deputy District Director and Member District Health Team, uh, Medical Officer, Special Grade Surgery at the Arua Regional Referral Hospital, Senior House Officer at Mulago National, National Referral Hospital, Medical Officer at St. Mary's Hospital, La Cho, and Intern Medical Officer at St. Mary's Hospital, La Cho. So he is the caliber of a person who is becoming a chancellor of Finns Medical University. So he is well-grounded in academics, he's well-grounded in research, he's well-grounded in health sciences. Now at this moment, I would like to take you through what is going to happen. As we install the, the new chancellor, first we are going to have the chairperson of the University Council and the vice chancellor to come in front here. I'll first go through the whole thing, then we shall come later. They will come in front here, and the outgoing chancellor will also be in front here, overseeing the two. 
the two are going to enrobe the incoming chancellor with a, with a, with a, with a robe which is well prepared here. After that, the outgoing chancellor will hand the mess to the incoming chancellor. The mess here, which we have for Finns Medical University, is specially made. The incoming chancellor will raise it up and you will see. But you will see on top of it there is a candle. And that candle is symbolic that as Finns Medical University, we are burning bright today and in the future. And we keep our light burning. Then there is also a heart on that mess. That whatever we do, we do it with love and compassion. So those are the symbols that are on this mess. So after the outgoing chancellor handing the mess to incoming chancellor, the incoming chancellor will raise it up to the congregation. After that, the chairman board of directors will come in front here and administer a pledge of oath to the new chancellor. And after that, there will be a proclamation and that is uh, the chairman, board of directors, who shall proclaim. What they are going to say is going to be broadcasted there. So at this moment, I take the singular opportunity to invite the vice chancellor and the chairperson of the university council to come and enrob the incoming chancellor. Mr. Chancellor, sir, you will be overseeing what they are doing in front here. standing there. Uh, you'll be standing facing the congregation and you'll be decorated by the vice chancellor and the chairperson of the council. As the outgoing chancellor is observing so that no mistake is made, that work is done on behalf of the chancellor. Oh, sure. DJ, if you have some cool music, this is a very important moment. Hey, they are waiting for the music to accompany this. That is how it is done. I can tell you, it is very few of you who have seen this. I haven't seen it either. This is a special robe. You shall not see anybody putting it on until Dr. Olaro is back here for an official function. It's not a, it's not a normal gown. It's a chancellor's robe. Vice Chancellor, yeah. uh -huh. and I can feel my wings right in the wind. Yeah, I see the finish line just up ahead now. So, Mr. Chancellor, sir, I invite you to present the mess to the incoming Chancellor. I can see the distance of the journey 
Aha. Where are the hand clubs? Where are the hand clubs? Aha. That is a transfer of power. Power has moved from the outgoing chancellor to the incoming chancellor. Thank you very much. I would like to request, after the photos, I would like to request the chairman board of directors to come forward. Those are historical photos. They shall be in our museum, they shall be in our boardrooms. Uh, Mr. Chancellor, you will stay, you will stay behind a bit. Uh, Shamila, I'm trying to put back the project I'm filing somehow. Ah, it's coming. I would like to... It has come. I would like to invite the, the chairman, board of directors, to step forward and administer the pledge, the oath. And uh, I will hand over the two microphones. The director will read the words in, the, or in the lemon, orange, or lemon green, and the chancellor will repeat accordingly. Finns Medical University stands for excellency, humanity, collegiality, integrity, and hard work. Finns Medical University stands for excellency. No, eh? no. You, you read the, the chancellor as well. Yes. I acknowledge these values, and I pledge to uphold them. The university is a gift to the community, the students, and those who have studied and work or worked here. I honor this tradition and acknowledge that the present we create we will, our, will be our gift to those who follow. We provide quality education to the diverse body of students and advance medical knowledge in a dynamic and collaborative environment whilst ensuring quality medical education, research, clinical practice, and responsiveness to community needs in a sustainable manner. I acknowledge our mission to all of, the, all of the regions and to the development of humanity for the good of the planet. We aim to be a leading medical university in biomedical education, research, and quality patient care to improve healthcare services in Africa. I will support the vision of our institution, academics, to pursue knowledge, innovation, and respect the dedication of all our staff. Our students come from across the region and across the world. The diversity is our wealth and I will protect the aspiration that draw our students here and promote the aspirations of those who come in the future. Our, gra our graduates belong to the university and the university to them. I welcome our alumni as a vital part of the life of the university. Today, the university asks you to serve as chancellor, to shepherd it through the challenges that it faces to preserve its traditions and to guide its aspirations. I will serve.
Thank you. Oh, yes. I, Kalens Victor, as the chairperson board of directors, present the pledge of office and a copy of the university charter document. Uh, and a copy of the university charter document to the chancellor. I now proclaim the oh, no, no. Yes? Ah. You know, this is a historical thing, so. I now proclaim the chancellor installed in office. Thank you. Mm. Uh, okay, the document handing over saying that it was not so visible, so I can, for historical purposes. Uh, you know, is that? All right. Is that all? Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, Board of Directors, for that function. The installation is over. I would like to congratulate. I would like to congratulate you, sir, Mr. Chancellor, sir, Dr. Oral Charles, for becoming the second chancellor of Finns Medical University. As the director has said, we shall have a wall of chancellors in one of the special buildings here. So like we have uh, uh, Reverend Canon Samuel Morangi, so we shall have Dr. Olaro and the other chancellors to come in future. The media team is uh, requesting that we all come in front here and the chancellor holds the mess and they have an official photo. Madam, please join the, the team. The chancellor will stand in the middle and hold the mess. Join them, please. Join them, please. Anybody where you want to fight you? Then I come there already, no. I'll be right beside you. Back the wall of Jericho. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know what's going on. You will let us know when you are done with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You should know I got and you don't need to get me to I'll be by beside you in anything that you if you ever need to say I will be funny to Okay. So ladies and gentlemen. A big hand clap to welcome Dr. Olaro Charles, the Chancellor of Finns Medical University. He will preside over the next graduation. Council will meet him and management, and we shall explain to him what else we are doing. So the chairperson of the University Council and the Vice Chancellor will be directly giving updates to the Chancellor. At this moment, we are going to receive a speech from the outgoing Chancellor, 
Akiki, you are warmly welcome to address the congregation. And after that, I will request you to invite the Chancellor to give his speech. And the Chancellor, after your speech, you shall dissolve this congregation. And then we shall proceed with the cake cutting, cutting and others. Thank you very much, Akiki. It's on. Good evening, everyone. Dr. Charles Olara, Chancellor, sir, and your lovely wife, whom you will be introducing to us. The council, all invited guests, the director, the vice chancellor, secretary, sir, and the director and the visionary of this institution. We are told, we are taught in our Christian faith that where there is no vision, for those who are Christians, you should know this verse, where there is no vision, what happens? People perish. That's not a negative, that's a negative phrase. The opposite is also true. Where there is vision, what happens? People get healed. Huh? People get employment. People come to a party. People, the, an area gets a university, a medical university. A country receives an, the first medical university. The whole continent benefits because of what? Because of the vision. We thank God, I thank God for having given Victor the vision. Let's clap for him. A couple months ago, I was in Israel on a pilgrimage, 14 days visiting some very historical places. I visited Nazareth. What happened in Nazareth? That's where one man came, humbled, and was born in a manger. And yet, he turned out to be the savior of the world. Being born in a manger, being born in uh, one place in now Kivito, Kivito, doesn't mean that God has forgotten about you. I am actually not surprised that someone who was born in Kivito grew up as an orphan. By the way, I, I, his father served as a lay catechist and later as a priest. But God would use someone all the way from Kivito. What is the actual village? What is the name of the actual village? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> from Cabonero, Kasogi, eh? to now the uh, proprietor, entrepreneur, that someone and young people can look up to and say, I want to be like Victor. We, we were taken around Israel, we visited several places. We, were, we visited um, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, uh, which was built by the mother of Constantine the Emperor as a remembrance for the place where Christ was, bought, was, was hanged and where he was buried. We also visited um, Mount Olives, which is believed People believe that that's where Jesus ascended from, and that's where he will come back. That's when he will appear when he comes back. Now, this man that I'm talking about, you all know him. His, his name was Jesus. He performed miracles. 
healed people, fed people. But I want to talk about healing because we refer to him as the great physician. He also happens to be the, our role model and our mentor. We look up to him. Some of the, most of the things that we do, we try to imitate him. When he was leaving, his disciples, you know, he only, it's interesting, he only served for three years. He lived for 33, 33 years, but he only served full time in ministry for three years. By the way, he was born in a manger. He would have born, he would have, God would have made it possible for him to be born in, in uh, what is this uh, uh, modern uh, uh, hotel in Fort Potro? Yeah, God would have built Nyeika in Israel for his son to be born. He didn't do that. He served for three years. He had all the powers, and then he decided just to serve for three years. He would have served for 10 years, 15 years, 30 years, but he chose to serve for three years. I think maybe, and I'm not sure, Maybe he was setting an example for not only for religious leaders, even, but even for political leaders, that you serve and then you hand over. You don't stay forever. Even if you're going to think, I mean, you, there, were, the, there was a Muganda uh, president, Agamanti, and Okolachi. He served for three years. I'm handing over to a very, very capable man, by the way. Even more capable, more knowledgeable in terms of healthcare uh, uh, services, Dr. Lara, Dr. Charles Olara. Very capable. I'm only a theologian, but he is, not only is He's taking over because he's a medical practitioner, but he's taking over because he was a mentor to Victor. So Victor, you are a very blessed man. You have two mentors. As you mentioned that I was your mentor, I'm glad that you remember that. And also that, that Dr. Chas uh, Olara was your mentor. Two chances. You may call that luck. I think I call that a blessing that was ordained <laughs> by God. The other thing that Jesus did or said when he was leaving his disciples, he said, I am not leaving you alone. I will leave you. I'm not leaving you not just alone. I will, I'm not leaving you as orphans. I'm leaving you I'm leaving behind you with a counselor, a Holy Spirit. So I want to par paraphrase those words coming from John, saying, I'm so glad that I'm not leaving this institution without a chancellor. I'm actually leaving this institution as a chancellor, handing over to someone who is even more able. Clap for him, please. The other thing that Jesus said was, on a, another occasion, he said, I'm going, do not let your hearts be troubled. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And after I prepare a place for you, that's from John, I will come back and I will take you to where I am. Friends, Finns, it's obvious that I'm not leaving you alone. But if, where I came from recently, where I have been serving, I'm not idle. I'm actually doing some good work that represents, I've been representing Finns, but also a good job that represents the people of Toro and the people of Uganda. For example, I'm building, I've just finished, or I'm in the process of 
launching a daycare, a school for young people, 90 children this coming September. Once I'm done doing the things that for the United States, I will come back, I'll put more effort, try to find ways of serving Finns. Mr. Chancellor, you don't have to be worried about your position. I'm not coming back for your position, okay? What I will do, God willing, I will be supplementing your efforts as the Chancellor and as the Council. The more successful I become in the United States, the more Finns name will be known and the more Finns will benefit from that success. Um, being the pioneer of a pioneer chancellor of a, an institution is not a simple thing. Um, I'm very proud, I'm very proud of you, Victor, and I'm very grateful that you, I don't, you had the vision, again, it goes back to the vision of asking me to serve as you. By the way, by the time Victor asked me to serve as his first chancellor, I was an ordinary priest. And the moment he asked me to serve as a chancellor, then I was appointed as the dean, one of the deans in the United States. <laughs> well, I was, I've been serving as a chancellor. I received the call from my bishop that the diocese of, uh, for, of uh, Arwenzori diocese, this, through the synod, decided to appoint me as the, one of the canons of the diocese. So, what I've been a blessing to you, my son, you've also been, I think, a blessing to me. Um, so that's one. Uh, secondly, Again, I make my pledge to continue praying for this institution. <laughs> Promoting this institution. Sharing the pictures we have taken with my friends. And God willing, God willing, one of my visions is to establish a fund through my family to continue that old legacy of helping those who cannot help themselves. <laughs> Once again, I thank you for coming and witnessing this very historical occasion. I want to thank Victor for organizing such a wonderful, you know, you could have just accepted my stepping down and saying, well, thank you for serving us, but you decided to uh, take an extra step, walk an extra mile, and organize together with your team, with your council. 
Thank you and thank you. I go to prepare a place. When I have prepared the place, I'm paraphrasing Jesus' words, I will come back and you will benefit from that preparation. <laughs> 10 days or maybe nine days from now, I'll be boarding my flight back to the United States to continue the work that God has called me to do. And uh, I hope and pray that soon you will begin to benefit from those fruits. Maybe, maybe when I'm launching the school, some of you, God willing, could join me and also witness what I'm doing, the work that I'm doing in the United States. Thank you, thank you, and I think we owe God a thank you for where he has brought as far. Thank you and God bless you. Now, is this the right time for me? Am I the right person to invite? The new guy on the block, is that what they say? Huh? The new guy on the block? Your Excellency, sir, the Chancellor, the new Chancellor, my successor, please come and address your people. My predecessor, the outgoing chancellor, the director of board of directors, the chair of the board of the, the directors, the chair of the university council, the vice chancellor, the university registrar and the staff, my wife, dear wife, all my colleagues who accompany me, the media, ladies and gentlemen, Allow me first to really thank God for, for this. And um, first, I think first things first, we are scheduled this function early, but I couldn't come in. And you know science sometimes has good, good part of it, but also has got sometimes the bad part of it, that I worked on many assumptions which assumption did not work in my favor. But I, I, in the process of that journey, I did put some notes, which I thought I would probably today first speak as an outsider, an independent mind, and then I will get definitely a calamite, calamite absorbed eventually. So my wife is Sarah Amongin Olaro. who have lived for slightly over 30 years. <laughs> so, and I did ask her to accompany me. She initially had her own schedules, but she willingly accepted. So thank you very much for accepting to come. So before I go through what I have written, first I want to say that my attachment with this region or the first journey which I made to, to Rensorio for photo was on, definitely on a bad note because that time I had to help to evacuate the students who had been burnt in Kichwamba. That was in 1998. So that's the first time when, when I came to, to Fort photo. I did learn in Buinga Stadium. And then I went back we lost a number of them, but there were others which we, we saved. So when, at that time I was doing my master's in surgery, 
So after completing, I was deployed to Arua, where I worked for 10, 10 years. So it's not like now you have health workers, you trust them, even the next month they're asking already they won't be transferred. So I was in Arua for 10, 10 solid years. I remember one time m meeting one of my OBs, who was the chair here, Mugisha. He asked me, why don't you come and work in Fort Photo? I, I saw that just as a, a by the way. But it happened that in, 20, in 2008, actually I got transferred to Fort Photo. <laughs> I got transferred to Fort Photo. Where again I stayed for 10 what? 10, 10 solid years. So when you hear what Kalans is saying, when I did come, for those who know Fort Photo quite, quite some time, there was a lot of illegal training of nurses. Actually, people were extorting money, legal, trying to train what? Train nurses. And that's where my impetus for setting a training school. I talked to a number of institutions here, but many of them were reluctant to do what? To start training schools. And the amounts the people were being illegally charged was actually equivalent to what you would pay as school what? Tuitions. And then ultimately, you get this fake, fake certificate which is not going to take you where. So I really want to applaud that. But I thought the first thing I should have done first, though I, I, I've been put on the rope, I think my presence here is already showing that Akel have accepted the appointment. <laughs> because you would probably say that I have just come to this and I will do what? So I, I want to again re-echo that. I want to accept this appointment formally and, and want to thank the deeply honored and I want to thank those who nominated me and ultimately selected me to be the second chancellor. <laughs> I think if you have been in the class, the numbers you would want to become is either number one or number two. So I'm lucky to be number two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky to be number two. So I really want to thank my family and I wish to thank the founders, the university council, and the entire university community for the confidence they have shown in entrusting me with this very important role for the next five years. First, I want to thank my predecessor for accepting to serve. And I think he has laid the foundation of which foundation we are now going to build, build on it. Let's appreciate him once again. As some a student of management, I know the handover is a continuous process. So Reverend Canon Akiki, if if there is any any anywhere I might not be able to how to read the book, I just need to just call the call him and then I can be able to get the answer. So handover just like any office is a continuous you will be able to do one. So why should I be able to struggle looking for the solution or create when I can, I know where I can be able to do it. And the best thing is that to solve a problem, 50% is nowhere actually okay, you can get the what? The solution. So thank you very much. And I also, sitting here and hearing what people are, are speaking, it really gives me comfort. Gives me that I think the foundation for this university has been laid. And I think now we should be able to see that it achieves what is desired and achieve more. I recognize the dreams and the foresightness of the founders of Finn Medical University, Mr. Kalensi and your wife, and which is with the, with the major principle of training competent medical practitioners. Because that's one thing, because you'll be trained, but what is important is they should be what? Competent. And we really, that should be that Anybody getting out of our gates and getting outside should be a competent health, health worker. And I want to, to, to say that our niche is in health sciences training and health research, and which is truly we must reflect in all our thoughts and what we do. I think the chair of directors already has, has indicated where do we want to move? Though he didn't say in an explicit way, 
But you cannot just have covered us. They are not just for a musia. It's an implication that we definitely need to set, set in what? To train other health workers like doctors and other cadre science like laboratory scientists, as he has indicated, because the equipment is here. And I, when I did walk in, when uh, Patrick called me, the, definitely most of the people who, who wanted to come with me were committed. But I came with a few of them, and uh, looking at those who were already around, I was looking at that, this could be members of the faculty. Not that uh, we are going to steal them from their institutions, but we already <laughs> will see where we can be able to do it, we can, where we can be able to start. So thank you very much for accepting Dr. Maxwell, the dean of the medical school, and then also working in the, in the board, I mean the, in the Me Uganda Medical and Dental Practice Council. Dr. Ruben has been with me. It's also a long story. We can't finish it here. I've seen him grow, and his wife, I think she's going to start internship. The, the people who have just been posted. So we've been together now. We have people from MAST. I think that's really a good to go. There are some few high areas which I, I wanted to see that I would want to speak to, which as I think they might be already ongoing, but I think those are some of the areas where we need to build emphasis. The need for the university to always adhere to the National Council of Higher Education and international guidelines. I think that's one of the things, because it's, it's really set that those are the guidelines which we should be able to do. Operate and as a university, we should be able to look to be compliant to ensure that the university policies are in place and are regularly updated. The human resource policy is really will be guiding because without human resources, we can't be able to achieve much. We really need to be able to do that. Finance is the bloodline of an organization. So if we have going going concern, then we have to address finance. Student affairs, that's why we're existing. Because if there were no students, we'd probably be doing a different what? Business. So students, we value, we really would want to value you. And then definitely is that, as the, I mean the secretary mentioned, 500 years, that means that an organization which is not closing tomorrow, so then we should be looking at what are our strategic what? plans, many years to do what? Many years to come. I want to emphasize on research and publications, because as you, you know, we, either, if you, either you publish or you perish. You will need to be able to do that. And we, we need to have our own institutional review board. We need to set it to be able to work on so that we can be able to publish within the university. Community engagement activities, we need to develop a portion paper on community engagement. I think the municipal, the council, I mean the city is already working with us. And because I am looking at that, the neighboring community here is not the same like when there was no university here. It's completely changed. And then, but we need to leave, continue living in a harmonious what? Environment with them. They are benefiting from students, they are able to do one. But also, they still be able to see that we see that there's no law, law, lawlessness around, around here. Participate in extracultural activities. We shouldn't just be living in class. We need to be able to look at what, what's life outside the what? The lecture rooms. So extracultural activities are essential parts of a well-nourished education. We should be deliberately building partnerships, meaningful partnerships with the private sector, specific industries, and other academic institutions. I am aware that definitely the outgoing chancellor has spoken of the, his intentions, but it is us to be able to follow. Because I'm sure even is there, it's quite also very busy. There are many other things. So it's us as a university, we need to be able to touch base with all our stakeholders. We need to align the university goal to the National Development Plan and SDGs, because we can't operate in isolation. We definitely need to be in tandem with what? The national development goals. We see how are we contributing. And I think we're contributing to the human capital development, to the human resources for health. 
So we need to be able to do that. So we need to be able to look at with National Planning Authority, what are those human resources which are in short in supply? And what are the projections for the what? For the, for the future. We cannot do without digital technology. We need to enhance it, whatever we do, but also for visibility. We need to be very visible. As a university, we need to be very visible. And we need to grow innovative initiatives. I think we should be having a session where students are able to showcase innovations so that we can be able to grow, grow them. We want to inculcate high quality of education because I really want to emphasize quality. That results in competence, workers who are competent, who are confident, who are creative, but also have got high moral character so that they really reflect the values which, which, which we are. We wouldn't want to get our, our students when they have left like the unfortunate student situation which happened in Lira, where a qualified person goes and does exams for another one, for somebody else. We don't want to get such, because that bring an embarrassment to the one, to the institution, disrepute to the institutions. So, because we need that the alumni should be our good ambassadors. We really, that when you get out, you should be proud. So that when you walk in this, around here, if you are putting a t-shirt or whatever of things, you walk with your head up, not that you, you are fearing to do what? To be identified with the things. The education, the university education should integrate and effectively engage the economic and social challenges of the local and regional communities. I want to mention the other aspects that we should be able to look at the inclusivity aspect of it because if we look around our community, are, they, are the students around here able to access these institutions? So that we're not just getting people for coming from outside. We would want somebody who around here who can say that that's where my, I grew from, my development came from. So we need to be able to look at those who can afford, those who can't afford, are there opportunities where people can be able to get in some funds to be able to that. So I want to let us that we align our strategic goal to the following. That ours, one of the key issues is student success. Not only success in the passing your exams, but also you should be able to do one. You should be able to pass as, as you go out. The other aspect, which I think I already discussed with the with the with the with the, the secretary is the aspect of alumni tracer surveys. We want to see where are alumni, where are they placed in terms of job market, in terms of competitiveness, in terms of people who can be able to to speak. Not only looking at when 2026 come, we also want to see how many of them have gone there. Hmm? So in all, of, at, at, we should be able to look how our students. So we need to get really very good mentorship, but also a follow, a follow up, a well follow up system. Community engagement, I've mentioned about that sustainability because that's key, but also in aspect of environment. We need to be able to see how it's our environment we look because all aspects that we are part of the ecosystem of planet Earth, and so we need to be able to look what's our environment, how are we, how are we contributing to it. Um, so I'm in here that the, the goal is to, of, of FINS is to train a new generation of health workers through a rigorous training in health theory and practice. So we really need to get these students that when you are here and you are being taken through this rigor, it's actually to your own benefit. It's not that, so that when you live in here, you can stand alone as an independent what? person. So because when you are out there, probably you will not have any support. So to want to make them become the most competent practitioners with a lifelong study habits and societal perspectives. Even me at my age, I still do, I do study. I do, but we really want that you do, you do study. These surgeons here will tell you that even the 
operations they have done several times, they will still read about it before they go to one. Because every case is completely one, different. So learning, it does not mean that when you live the, here, so lifelong learning is one of those areas. So what is our perspective? Definitely to support health of the people, but also meet the societal expectations. The director has mentioned to you that it's one of the hospitals we have a hospital here. So we need to really be able to build how can we be one of those where everybody would want to come. So really, and I want to thank the workers. So as, as I conclude, this is a journey which is beginning today. And we need the support of all, all those ones. But actually, for those who have attended, it's more important. Because we will probably excuse those ones who have not what? That we really need to be able to share the same value so that the aspiration the founders have should be the same aspirations which we should be able to cascade to the next person, to the next person. We were looking at a point, and I know some of the institutions, where people have grown from the lowest person and they have gone through the ranks and they have lived in that institution. So, so, so retention of workers, their staff development are all some of, some of the key because if we don't, it's more likely the staff whom we develop here can stay with us than staff who will do one come from outside. So we need to be able to develop our, our staff. I think that is sufficient for now. So once again, I would want to applaud the outgoing chancellor, the council, and all of you that let's work together, let's steer this institution so that it becomes epitome, as you've heard, that is the only science university. Let's see how it replicates on that. For my other colleagues, you are welcome even to visit when I am not one. So you don't necessarily need to wait for me to do what? To come to visit. You can always be able to come to, to visit. To the students, I think you made the right choice. You heard that all people passed and passed very well. Because the moment you fail, then you have to pay more additional school fees. You also have lost a job opportunity. So it's the earlier you get out of it, actually you tell students that get to an institution, do chap chap, finish, and then do what? Think on what is the next aspect of it. So career development, we want to get peer to peer, and then we want that the students are part of what we do as part of our business. So ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure, a great evening, and a blessing to all of you. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, Mr. Chancellor, sir, you dissolve the congregation, then we can proceed with other businesses. I have also got through a process of learning, but by the powers vested upon me, is now my, at this point in time, I dissolve this congregation. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Chancellor, sir. We are coming towards the end of this function. And uh, I would like to ask uh, uh, some members, uh, our staff, uh, to come and help Kate and put this table in the middle there. We are going for a cake cutting session. And uh, uh -huh. As an anchor, I'm a uh, down here. Help me. At this moment, I would like to invite the high table. A team headed by the Chancellor, 
accompanied by the outgoing Chancellor Emeritus, Chairperson University Council and Chairman Board of Directors, and of course the Vice Chancellor to come here for the cake cutting session. It will only be for people in robes. Uh -huh. Dancing is allowed. So we are going to count from three to one, and this cake is in celebration of our new chancellor and in celebration of our chancellor emeritus. I'm counting from three to one. Three, two, one. Congratulations and celebrations. When I tell everyone that you're in love with me Congratulations 